Hello, everybody. My name is Jay Pipes. I'm an engineer on the EKS team at AWS, and I focus on open source contribution, in particular in the Kubernetes ecosystem. And today, I'm going to be talking a little bit about the AWS Controllers for Kubernetes project, or ACK. So to sort of introduce you to ACK, I'm going to tell you a little story. And it should be pretty familiar to quite a few of you. So we've got Alice. Alice is a web developer. She develops a Node.js application, and she's following most modern application um, uh, build techniques. She's building her application into immutable Docker images and uh, developing on Node.js. And she chooses to use SQLite for simple storage needs for her web application. Oh, I forgot to mention that Alice is a huge Kubernetes fan, of course. So Alice goes to deploy her application to a target Kubernetes cluster. And um, to do so, she does the typical kubectl apply for her deployment and a service and possibly an ingress, um, an ingress resource for top level uh, inbound routing. Everything is fine. Um, but then quite predictably, SQLite falls over. It's not really designed for heavily concurrent access. And so when 10 users try to use her website all at once, well, uh, things don't go uh, very well. So Alice, she realizes that she needs a real database. And she knows that Postgres is uh, a good example of a, you know, quote, real database uh, that uh, is heavily concurrent and um, uh, so she goes and she Googles for some tutorials on how do I set up uh, Postgres to run on Kubernetes. And most of those tutorials, they sort of boil down to what's on the screen here, which is uh, creating a secret in Kubernetes, creating a persistent volume claim for some storage, um, creating a deployment for the, uh, the database server heads, and then a service record um, for the Postgres database service. All of that goes to plan, but unfortunately, Alice realizes that she's now in the database administrator game, and that's definitely not what Alice had in mind uh, when she deployed uh, her uh, initial Node.js application to Kubernetes. Um, so Alice really wants to focus on her application. Um, she doesn't really want to be a DBA. That's not what she had in mind. So what can she do? So Alice hears about Amazon RDS, the Relational Database Service. And it kind of sounds like, hey, this is a great solution here. Um, it's going to take away all the pain points that she has about installing and maintaining Postgres by um, you know, doing all that for Alice. But there is a little bit of a problem. And I did mention that Alice was a huge Kubernetes fan. And um, Alice goes to use Amazon RDS, and she goes to the Amazon Web, Web Console, and she clicks through uh, some sort of GUI wizards to, to create her database instance. And she just doesn't really like it, right? She, she wears, wears her cozy Kubernetes experience that she loves. Um, well, she doesn't have to use the Web Console, of course. She could use the, the AWS CLI tool, or she could use a a tool like CloudFormation or Terraform. Uh, but at the end of the day, none of those things are Kubernetes. And like I mentioned, Alice really does love Kubernetes. So what is she to do? Well, what if she could just do this? What if she could kubectl apply a Kubernetes manifest with some YAML that describes her RDS database instance and send that off to the Kubernetes API server and have a Kubernetes controller manage the lifecycle of her RDS database instance for her? Well, this is pretty much what ACK is. Um, this is allowing Kubernetes users to continue using the Kubernetes API and the configuration language of the Kubernetes API machinery to manage AWS infrastructure resources, uh, things like RDS databases and S3 buckets and SNS topics, et cetera. So that, in a nutshell, is what AWS Controllers for Kubernetes is all about. It's, it's bridging the world of AWS service APIs with the Kubernetes API. And it's solving Alice's problems. And let's see if it'll uh, solve yours too. So ACK, 
stands for AWS Controllers for Kubernetes. And in particular, that's controllers plural. Um, it is a collection of Kubernetes custom controllers, one for each AWS service API. And um, the ACK service controller for that particular service, say S3 or RDS or SNS, they manage the backend AWS resources for that service API on behalf of a Kubernetes user. So the Kubernetes user submits their um, RDS instance or S3 bucket as a Kubernetes manifest. The Kubernetes API server receives that, writes it to etcd, and then the ACK service controller gets notified of a new uh, custom resource of a particular kind that it is interested in. And the ACK service controller for that service then goes ahead and manages the lifecycle of that resource by calling the AWS APIs itself. A little bit about the design of ACK. So uh, as many of you might know, uh, AWS has a lot of services. Um, I think we're uh, like 165 plus at this point. Um, when we started designing ACK, we realized early on that there, it's just, it wasn't feasible to hand build, you know, manually create 160 plus different uh, custom Kubernetes controllers. And so we set out early on to do everything using code generation in ACK. So we generate the API types from a set of JSON model uh, documents. Uh, in addition to the API types, we also generate all of the service controller implementation itself. Now this makes ACK a little bit different from something like Kube Builder, right? Which is an awesome, awesome project. Uh, the difference is that Kube Builder, when you generate your um, custom controller using Kube Builder, it provides you with like a skeleton, a stub for the controller, and then you're responsible for going and implementing that, uh, that controller. And uh, like I said, we realized that we, <laughs> we couldn't hand uh, implement 160 plus service controllers. So um, we actually generate the entire implementation of the service controllers in ACK. Um, uh, directly from the API models themselves. Uh, so that's a, a fairly big difference about ACK compared to something like KubeBuilder. Um, behind the scenes, we actually, KubeBuilder and ACK both rely on the cr controller tools and controller gen binary to uh, do various low level code generation um, for CRDs and the deep copy gen, things like that. Um, one way that we are um, different uh, is that we don't use CloudFormation. Um, the ACK project had its genesis in another project called the AWS Service Operator, or ASO. Um, and an old colleague of mine, Chris Hine, created the ASO project maybe two years ago. Uh, when he built uh, ASO, uh, he he used CloudFormation behind the scenes. So when, for instance, you create an S3 bucket through ASO, it would actually create a CloudFormation stack which created an S3 bucket. And we thought that that user experience was uh, a little surprising for, for users. Um, when we started investigating ACK and diving into some implementation proposals, we also realized that at the end of the day, a Kubernetes custom controller it relies on the Kubernetes API server and etcd to be the single source of truth for the desired state of a resource. And CloudFormation, because, well, it is managing resources for, um, for the user, it has its own uh, idea about <laughs> uh, who, is, who has the desired state of truth for uh, a resource. And by using CloudFormation, we, you kind of get into these race conditions and this conflict between, well, who owns the state of a particular resource? Uh, so we didn't want to uh, have that conflict. And so the design of ACK, we do not use CloudFormation. Instead, we directly call the AWS service APIs themselves. It's important to point out that ACK service controllers can be installed on any Kubernetes cluster. Uh, there's nothing about uh, ACK that is specific to EKS. You can run an ACK service controller on a GKE uh, instance of Kubernetes uh, or on-prem or a COPS cluster running on EC2. There's absolutely nothing about EKS that, um, uh, or there's absolutely nothing about ACK that is specific to EKS. And then finally, 
the way that we are building the ACK service controllers is that we are working hand in hand with the individual AWS service teams like Elasticash or API Gateway, working with their engineers in developing um, the custom code for their particular ACK service controller, along with a set of end-to-end -end tests that validate, verify that the service controller in ACK is calling their API in a behaviorally and semantically correct fashion. Um, so we are actively collaborating with the AWS service teams. So one big feature that we rolled out in ACK about three or four weeks ago uh, is something called cross-account resource management. Um, a contributor to ACK named Amin Hilali uh, is the, the mastermind behind this particular uh, feature. And um, let, me, let me explain a little bit about why it's important. So as I explained earlier, ACK is a set of Kubernetes, service, or Kubernetes custom controllers, one for each AWS service. And we realized that um, that experience uh, may be a little cumbersome for users to have to install uh, multiple pods containing an ACK service controller for each individual uh, AWS service. Well, we didn't want to compound that uh, particular uh, encumbrance of the user by also having the user have to install an ACK service controller in lots of different Kubernetes clusters in order to manage resources across multiple AWS accounts. And look, we talk to many customers and it's almost universal. They all use multiple AWS accounts to sort of segregate and, and sort of isolate resources within their organization. So some application development teams, they get their own AWS account. It might be within an organization, an IAM organization, um, or it might be separate. But we, we find it very common that uh, users uh, have have the need to manage the life cycle of resources across lots of different AWS uh, accounts. And so what cross account resource management allows is for the Kubernetes cluster admin to annotate a Kubernetes namespace with a specific annotation services.kates.aws forward slash owner dash account dash ID with the AWS account ID that um, that should own all of the resources that get created within that Kubernetes namespace. Um, so if I go ahead and do a kubectl apply and I pass in a manifest for an S3 bucket and that custom resource has um, uh, namespace X, it, it is, you know, uh, it is created in namespace X and the cluster admin has annotated namespace X with a particular owner account ID, uh, AWS account ID. What the ACK service controller will do is it will call STS assume role to pivot the AWS client that, is, that lives within the service controller so that it can start managing resources in a target, a, a different target AWS account uh, than is associated with the IAM role under which it is, uh, was running by default. Um, and in this way, a single ACK service controller for S3 or RDS can manage resources within that particular service across lots of different target accounts. You don't need to install lots of different ACK service controllers, one for each different uh, AWS account ID that you need to manage. Related to the cross account resource management is uh, the topic of authorization and access control. The reason I bring it up, it's a fairly complex topic and especially with ACK, you need to remember that there are two RBOC systems in play at any given time. One is the Kubernetes RBOC system, the role-based access control system, and that will dictate what Kubernetes users, for instance, Alice, uh, can create, list, patch, delete, different custom resource kinds in the Kubernetes API. Once that uh, once the Kubernetes API um, performs its authorization checks, that's the end of the Kubernetes RBOC uh, system, or at least for, um, for the purposes of ACK. After that point, when an ACK service controller receives an event notification of a new custom resource of a particular kind, it needs to talk to the AWS APIs. And in order to do that, that's where the AWS IAM uh, our box system comes into play. And uh, there is an IAM role that is associated with the service account 
that is running, uh, that the pod with the service controller is running as, um, that IAM role has a set of permissions or policies um, that allow it to manage the lifecycle of resources in a particular uh, AWS API. Um, the two RBOC systems, Kubernetes and IAM, they don't overlap, right? And if you go to the link that's uh, on this page here, uh, I show a diagram explaining just how uh, those two RBOC systems come into play, but they don't actually overlap with each other. And it's important as you start using ACK and testing it out, trying it out, uh, that you understand uh, where these two RBOC systems come into play. So what about secret things? Uh, th those of you who are familiar with the RDS um, API, you might know that the create DB instance API call, unfortunately passes in plain text, a field called master user password. Um, Clearly that is not something that is a Kubernetes best practice with regards to um, secret like fields. Instead, the Kubernetes best practice is of course to create a Kubernetes secret object and then a key within that secret object and then refer to that key within the secret from another resource. And so our secret replacement feature, which should be coming out in the next month or so, does just that. It uh, replaces certain fields in various resources like DB instance or RDS DB instance uh, replaces those plain text uh, string types with a reference to a key within a secret. So um, Alice can set master user password to be name of DB secrets and key of master user password. And a Kubernetes cluster admin kind of created a Kubernetes secret called DB secrets and put in the, um, the actual master user password uh, into that secret, as opposed to passing it in plain text, <laughs> um, both to and from the AWS APIs. So which AWS services do we have uh, currently in developer preview? Well, uh, as of today, which is the 27th of October, um, we have uh, seven uh, services in developer preview, S3, SNS, SQS, ECR, DynamoDB, API Gateway v2, and ElastiCache. Um, we have a roadmap uh, that is publicly available at the link that you see on your screen. And uh, that lists our rough timelines of when we are bringing new services into developer preview and when we plan on getting the services that we already have in developer preview into a beta state and a GA state. You'll also find links to um, from the GitHub repository here to our documentation that describes our release criteria for developer preview, beta, and GA. Basically, it boils down to um, beta, you'll have the ability to easily install the service controller using Helm. Um, and there'll be quite a bit more uh, testing and documentation for all of the resources exposed in the API. And then GA, it's really about stabilization of the API types and um, a low level of reported bugs for that particular service controller. So our roadmap also includes a couple more important items. One is the um, normalization uh, of the representation for AWS tags. So those of you familiar with AWS APIs probably know that um, various service APIs in the AWS API universe use different representations for AWS tags. Some use a map of string to string, some use a list of structs with a key and a value, et cetera. Uh, it's all different. Anyway, we'll be standardizing that to all be spec.tags, which will be a map of string to string. Um, there's an adopt a resource uh, uh, feature where if you create something out of band from ACK, like let's say you have a pre-existing S3 bucket and you just wanna bring it under the ownership of the ACK service controller, you'll be able to do that by annotating the, the custom resource with a particular ARN or Amazon resource name. Uh, we'll have a common rate limiting and throttling library that's going to be separate from ACK, but will be used by ACK along with other projects like Crossplane or maybe even uh, the um, cluster API uh, for AWS or cloud provider AWS in, in the core Kubernetes universe. So I very much encourage you to check out the uh, repository here, github.com, AWS, AWS controllers, Kates. Uh, we hang out on the provider AWS channel on the Kubernetes Slack community and 
anytime. You can uh, get in touch with me, Twitter, GitHub, Slack. I'm uh, at JPipes. Thank you very much.